today of talking with uh, Paul Peterson, who is the CEO and founder of Volta Valera Corp, located out in today, beautiful, sunny Portland, Oregon. And uh, we're going to talk about the, uh, the aircraft that uh, Paul and his group are uh, building. A, uh, I guess it would be, uh, let's see, an extended range electric aircraft, uh, from at least what descriptions I've heard of it. And you're going to, of course, tell us all about it, I guess, today. Right, Paul? Happy to, of course. Uh, excellent. Great. Well, hey, well, thank you, first of all, for doing this. Uh, let's get some, uh, some background here, first of all. What, uh, what's your aviation background? Well, it goes back about 30 years. Okay. Uh, back on the farm in Minnesota when my granddad had a Piper Cub and my brothers and I would joyride the thing when, when, uh, when, when we thought we were getting away with it. Right, uh, yep. Of course he knew and we eventually got caught and paddled, uh, but that's how we learned to fly. And he, he taught us sitting on Minneapolis-St. Paul phone directories in the front seat <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> with the basic lessons, you know, left, right, right houses get bigger, houses get smaller. Right, exactly. Well, I've, uh, I've got, I've got uh, a little bit of time, not much, a little bit of time in a, uh, a Piper Cub myself, so I understand what you're talking about. <laughs> And that led to, uh, you know, the job sweeping the hangar floor and fetching tools from the mechanics and fueling trainers and so on at the local airport, where right. I, I, uh, I eventually earned enough to, to, on credit to, to get a pilot's license, which, which helped me get an Air Force ROTC scholarship, which helped me get into the T-37 and the F-16 and, and, uh, uh, and, and a career in aviation that's, that's been all around uh, high-speed, low-drag, high-performance aircraft ever since. Um, uh, I, I ran a, um, a technology-based venture capital incubator for a number of years through the, the 90s and early aughts, which uh, allowed me to, to experience and invest in and, and, and help and support young entrepreneurial teams develop new technologies, primarily in the renewable energy EV space. Right. We, okay. we invested in, participated in, and sat on the board and officers' positions of a number of, of renewable energy technology-enabled businesses ever since. And I've, in the meantime, I've, I've built and flown and uh, designed and, uh, and, and raced all kinds of aircraft. And starting about 2007, when folks like Elon Musk uh, of, uh, started and kicked off Tesla and, and guys like Henrik Fisker right. and some of the leading pioneers in the EV world were, were really starting to, to, to make a go of things with with the evolution of technology, um, we realized that it, it was about time that somebody integrated uh, and transferred essentially automotive EV technology into the general aviation space. Um, aircraft, as, as I'm sure you're aware, require a lot more power, a lot more energy to carry a payload and, and to overcome you know, the forces of, uh, of gravity and drag and so on. Right. You know, we're, not, we're not just up against rolling resistance. So um, we require a lot more power, and the evolution of, of energy storage technology really isn't quite there yet to go all electric, unless you just want to go around the patch in a, you know, a glorified motor glider. Right, exactly. To enable a high-performance aircraft to carry a payload over range, you know, we, we need to incorporate a hybrid design. So starting in about 2007, we, we started developing you know, the, the Volta Volare aircraft. Um, we've gone through a number of designs, a number of different prototypes, a number of different uh, power plant systems and ESS energy storage systems uh, until we finally settled on this design about a year ago, um, which lends itself well to the, 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 you know, the carrying of a lot of batteries. Right. Um, and, uh, and, and the incorporation of a, uh, of a range extender generator engine. Until such time as, as energy storage technology improves and, and we can manage the discharge of, of super caps and ultra caps in a safe, safe, safe way, um, you know, we'll, we'll continue with the series hybrid approach, a lot, not unlike the, the Fisker Karma. In fact, that's in large part where we've drawn our inspiration. It's a beautiful vehicle. Right. The, yeah. the performance, the interior, the, the class, the, you know, the way it handles, that's what we're trying to emulate. Okay, Fisker, the Fisker karma of the air. Yeah, we, I've heard that before. Yeah, um, I mean, right. <clears throat> and, and that's what we're trying to emulate, to, to try and create uh, 
uh, an experience for pilots and their passengers uh, that um, that emulates something like a Fisker Karma or even a Tesla Model S. Oh, however, as you know, that's all electric. Right. Um, there are a lot of pioneering leaders in the general aviation industry that are doing wonderful things. In fact, just last week I was at the CAFE Foundation's Electric Aircraft Symposium down in, in beautiful Santa Rosa. Right, yep. Um, you know, uh, led by Dr. Brian Seeley uh, and with the room full of just genius inventors, engineers, chemists, scientists, uh, the, the brain power being applied to aviation, as we call it, is just incredible. Yeah. I've, I've actually interviewed uh, Brian, oh, probably a year and a half, two years ago now. Yeah. He and the rest of the folks within the CAFE Foundation and small companies uh, and design teams all over the world are really doing wonderful things. However, as you know, it's all about the batteries. It's all about the batteries. And all you can really accomplish today, unfortunately, is, is, is limited payload, uh, limited range, Light. And long wings with solar Pardon? panels on them. And long wings with solar panels on them. That helps. Yeah. Hey, well, let's talk for a minute. Yeah, let's talk for a minute about the uh, the airframe. Uh, you being in aviation, obviously, uh, for as long, if not longer, than I've been involved with it, off and on at least. Uh, airframe has some uh, resemblances to some work that uh, Bert Rutan's done. Uh, any inspiration uh, there? Yeah, certainly. Uh, the The design of the Volta Volare um, was accomplished you know, about ten years ago, and the aircraft had flown in, in, uh, by a design team that came from and drew drew a lot of inspiration from Bert Rutan's work, uh, Velocity Aircraft's work, among uh, lots of other you know high performance canard aircraft. Right. Um, Again, hats off to Bert Rutan and hats off to you know his team at, at, at Scaled Composites. I mean, they and designs around efficiency in general aviation have really uh, helped us come to the point now where we can even think about incorporating you know EV technology into general aviation. Trying to put an electric motor or, more importantly, energy storage into into a, uh, into a heavy low performance low speed aircraft is is just not the way to go hence you know the the acquisition of this aircraft its design and the manufacturing plant thereof <coughs> excuse me um, that is how um, general aviation needs to evolve towards greater efficiency mm -hmm. yeah. um, a canard wing design as you're also I'm sure aware, lends itself to greater safety for you know passengers and, and pilots. Right, more stall resistant for one thing. I understand. Absolutely. One of the primary reasons for the selection of this airframe design for the Volta Volare and for an integration of our EV our, our aviation drive system is safety of the airframe. Sure, she's good looking and she's fast. And, and she's designed to carry uh, a lot of payload in fuel, or in our case, batteries. But the most important consideration, and this, this I can't stress enough, is the stall resistance of the flying wing design. Okay. Our pilots and owners and their passengers need to worry about less and less and less things when operating the aircraft. And stall resistance of the canard wing design does that for them. In addition, a lot of other things that we've incorporated into this aircraft, a uh, touchscreen EFIS avionics system that reduces the pilot cockpit workload. Okay. Uh, when you're flying at 200 knots plus, uh, you've got limited time and what we call in the Air Force, you know, you need to, you need to avoid what we call helmet fire. Um, at confusion and, and you know, a you know, short time to make the right decisions. Yeah. So, an electric motor in our aviation drive, uh, having one moving part, also lends itself well to improving safety of, of general aviation and the pilots and their passengers. That, again, is, is the primary reason why we exist. 
EV technology is evolving so fast and is lending, uh, is, is creating such a higher standard of safety for passengers and terrestrial vehicles. Right. Incorporating that in general aviation aircraft and trying to take it a step further, um, again, with the mission towards making the safest, not just the most efficient, but the safest general aviation aircraft ever to be built.